Hello and welcome to another episode of Issues and Insights. I'm Megan Cable with A Plus Family Healthcare, and today we are welcoming Mike McNutt from the Hardin County uh, Government Center, and he is here to talk to us a lot about what he does with them mm -hmm. and how much he cares about our county. Mike, thank you so much for joining us well, today. Well, thank you for having me. Of course. So you are working over our animal care shelter. Yes, I'm the director of Hardin County Animal Care and Control. I've been there uh, seven years, going on eight, I think. What brought you to want to do that? Um, it's funny. I'd been at Kentucky Humane Society for 27 years. Mm -hmm. It's my first job. I had never had any interest in going anywhere else. Wow. Uh, but I was coming down here doing rescue work where I would pick up animals that we thought we could adopt in Louisville and, and taking them back. And I'd been longtime friends with Jerry Foley, the previous director. Yes. And um, when it came up that the job was open, uh, the rescue coordinator, Joellen Thomas, that I was working with, she said, why don't you apply? Well, you know, I was trying to get animals and trying to do things. So I told her, sure, I'll, you know, I'll think about it. I'll, I'll apply. I never, if I tell you I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, yeah. but I never had any intentions of leaving Kentucky Humane Society, honestly. They were, mm -hmm. they were good to me. I'd, I'd grown up there. Um, I'd never, ever thought about stepping out of that role, but um, one thing led to another. I show up one day, and Jim Roberts, uh, the then Je deputy director, uh, showed up, and he, it was the very next week, and he was, you know, like, really interested in talking to me, and uh, I was was a little taken back by how much attention he gave me. It's like, wow, yeah. you know, this is this is really happening. Okay, so and at Kentucky Humane, we had already went no kill. Mm -hmm. So everything they had taught me that of ways of getting to that point, or, or I couldn't use it anymore because we were at that point. Yeah. So I, and I was going through the motions. I was still doing good. I was still saving animals, but I, I, I had more to give. I had more to offer. Mm -hmm. And it was funny, I was really, it was weighing heavy on me, and uh, I believe everybody has a path and somebody else chooses it for us, to, uh, for us. and I was walking into a store down here one day, and, and uh, an elderly man, he had to be in his 80s, he had his arm in his sling and an arm, his leg in a boot, mm -hmm. and he tried to hold the door for me, and I said, I tried to hold the door for him, and so we're having this back and forth yeah. or whatever, and finally I said, sir, if I don't hold this door for you, my grandma in heaven's going to smack me upside the head. Yes, she is. And he said, well, son, I can't have your grandma mad at you. And it was like, click. It was like, you're meant to be in Hardin County. Mm -hmm. I truly know that I was meant to be here in Hardin County. I know that the path that we've chose at the shelter, um, the good things, you know, we've succeeded in at the shelter, the, the team that I have, they're phenomenal. Some of the hardest working uh, most dedicated people I've ever been able to be around. And they, they get it. They understand yeah. the problem. You know, one of the biggest problems was animal control. Yeah. Years ago, we said, bring them to us, bring them to us, bring them to us. We made animals disposable. Mm -hmm. They're not disposable. Yeah. They matter. Yes. So by flipping the script and saying, all right, you're responsible for your animals, mm -hmm. and this is how we're going to do this, we've actually elevated them but what you'll find in Kentucky you know I'm right now I'm the president of the Kentucky Animal Care and Control Association wow. and i um, been on the governor's advisory board for five years yeah. what you'll find out about Kentucky is change happens but it happens in baby steps yes and you know some of the problems that I face is I'm very passionate about what I do but I understand that I have to work mm -hmm. with these people to change for the good. Yep. Some of the worst challenges I have are with the people that are just as passionate. They call themselves animal advocates, but they want to run towards the future. Mm -hmm. We're 50 years behind on our laws. You've got to take a slow and steady pace to get there. Yeah. You have to be patient in the waiting and knowing that it's worth it. Yeah, and I don't want to call it a game. I don't mean it to, to downplay it, but it, it's almost like playing chess. Mm -hmm. You have to make strategic moves to further along the animal care yeah. vision that you have. Yeah. And we're doing it and we're succeeding. It just it, it just takes time. Yeah. And Impatient. your heart started 27 years ago for this. And well, of course it would make sense that you'd be here. Yeah. Well, I was there 27 years at Kentucky Maine. So now I'm in it 35, 36, wow. something like that. I started 
April Fool's Day, 1989, <laughs> was the first day I walked in to work at the Kentucky Humane Society. Wow. So your heart has been in it for 35 years mm -hmm. and intentional work of taking care of beings that are often forgotten and often don't have somebody to advocate for them. Yes. And you've made it your mission to do that. I, yes, I would say that. And I've, you know, recently I uh, won the the Animal Achievement Award mm -hmm. uh, nationally for the yes. Humane, Humane Society of the United States. Um, and my people will tell you I'm all about team. So yeah. I don't like talking about me mm -hmm. because the truth is no one person makes change in the animal field by themselves. If you yes. do not surround yourself with the right people, with the right passion level, and the right state of mind, yes, then you're not going anywhere. And there are people that are too passionate mm. to be in this field because what they do is they're so loud that they push the agenda backwards. Yeah. Frankfurt, Frankfurt's only going to listen to you if you come there with respect mm -hmm. and dignity and, and understand the process. Mm -hmm. So. Which can be understanding. So mm -hmm. surrounding yourself with those like-minded people mm -hmm. who have that same care and support, but understand that change does take time. And that's hard to grapple with sometimes when your heart is so big and you're caring so much for these animals, yes. which I'm sure you look into their eyes and you just see how much they want to be loved and they know what that feels like for some of them and some of them they don't and you want to provide that for them, right? Well, and we also... You know, we cannot, we, we, we are responsible for what we put out there. Mm -hmm. So every Friday, the staff meets and we talk about each individual animal in the shelter and what it needs to successfully get it out. Wow. If we can successfully get it out. Mm -hmm. Recognizing that you can't save everything is yeah. important. If I will not put an animal I will not adopt it out to my daughter's neighbor where it's going to be beside my grandchild. Mm. I'm certainly not going to put it beside your grandchild. Mm. Uh, that's a big responsibility to take on for the entire staff, and it's yes. something we hold very seriously. It's not a one-person decision, yeah. and it's not automatic decision. It's, okay, well, let's try this. Let's try that. Let's do this. There's so many different things we do to try and rehabilitate mm -hmm. a dog because it is a firm belief at my shelter there are no bad dogs, just bad owners. Yes. I can take the nicest dog in the world and make it mean. I yes, can take the can. meanest dog in the world and through it, with enough time make it a good animal. Yes. So it's uh, just, but at the same time, you have to be physically responsible for your budget and you need to invest in the animals that you know are going to be a good outcome. The more good outcomes you have, mm -hmm. the more you have towards the future, the more good outcomes it will, it will bring. Um, there are some animals that we just can't save, you yeah. know. We uh, also, we've been nationally recognized mm -hmm. three times in the past two years by three separate national organizations. So one was the National Animal Care and Control Association. Mm -hmm. And it was an article in a magazine that they produced quarterly. So it's, I think it was a summer issue of 2021 20, or 22. Mm -hmm. And it was strictly about how we handled COVID at the shelter. Wow, yeah. A lot of shelters put their animals in foster. Um, we sat and we talked about what we wanted to do, mm -hmm. and everybody had strong feelings. You know, we were ordered to stop doing surgeries and all these different things that we do because they needed our, our PPE. Yes. Well, we all have license to do what we do. I have a DEA. The vet has a DEA. Um, the euthanasia technicians all have to be certified, yeah. and it's a big deal. So when you're told to stop by the licensing agency, you know what you do? You stop. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the other groups were putting their animals into foster care. But I, when I looked at it, I thought, if we do that, if, if I put everybody into foster, I'm not going to need my staff here. They're mm -hmm. going to get bored, find another position. Mm -hmm. So what we decided to do was we started advertising our animals online. We put videos out. We, we did all these different things that I'd never thought of before, and I'm not a... I, I don't even have a Facebook page. I'm not a Facebook guy. <laughs> yeah. I feel Facebook gives a platform to the wrong people. That's my Again, opinion. Yes. 
So, but the way we handled it, we did not have to euthanize for time and space when COVID broke. Wow. All the other groups that fostered yeah. did. They had to quickly. Wow. So that's why they came to us. We, that's why they wanted to do the story it was because we thought outside of the box. Yes, you did. And just so you know, when we did that, I lost volunteers. I had people moving against me because their passion thought that the animals belonged to be in a home, mm -hmm. which is where I want them. Yeah. But I kept my people working. And you know what? It was so therapeutic. To, every day, there was nobody coming into the shelter. The animal controls were going out after the, uh, the officers were going out after the animals. So every day, my people got to spend all day long with the animals, walking them, teaching them to sit, teaching them to stay, teaching them all these different things that made them more adoptable. Mm -hmm. We did not lose any of our good animals during COVID. Yeah. And, or after that, for that matter, we're still, we have still not had to have to use, have not had to use an ice for time or space. Knock on wood, because it's, we're packed all the time. That's incredible. And I know that during COVID, a lot of us really dealt with some heavy mental health issues mm -hmm. from not being around our family and our friends and just being inside and for good reason, but knowing that the animals were being provided for and loved and that you're your people were also getting that love in return and spending time outside with these dogs and cats and everything, taking care of them. Mm -hmm. That has to have meant more to them than just being employed still. Well, it's funny. There was a, a couple of them that said, can we shut down for COVID for a couple of weeks? And I'm like, no, we can't. Because like I said, you know, the people in our field, the people, especially the ones that spend their whole life in it, there's no money in what we do. You're not going to get rich. And, and please, no, I'm not complaining about what I make. I don't, I don't mean yeah. it that way. No, what I'm talking about. No, you do about, it because you love it. If you're going to dedicate your life to it, and you know, there are people everywhere that walk up and they say to us, I could, I could never do what you do. I love animals too much. And what's the truth? No, you don't. We love animals enough to have two jobs for 25 years mm -hmm. so that we can do what, what we love what and, we, and we are there every day, boots on the ground, trying to do these things. Mm -hmm. uh, that's so insulting, and a lot of people don't get that, that you know, when I could never do what you do because I love animals too much. Mm. You understand what you're saying? Yeah. And what's the truth? You know, a lot of people that I've worked with that, have, that are passionate apply for jobs, and when they found out what they would make, I had one person look me in the eyes and say, I, I can't work for that. So it's hard. it depends on where, where your loyalties lies, whether you can do what we do on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm blessed to have every single member of my staff. They're all so talented and so devoted and just wonderful to be around. So They're there because they want to be and they know that the work is important and that it's needed and that it's so much more than just an income, yes. it's taking care of beings that can't take care of themselves right. and b bringing a passion and awareness to it. And, you know, we, we won the, the National Animal Control Magazine, we recognized on that, yes. and then we won the Best Friends No Kill Shelter Award yes. for maintaining a 90% live release rate. One of the worst words in our industry is no kill. Mm -hmm. That implies that there's not euthanasia taking place. Yeah. We're the only group that responds to an animal hit by car after hours. So we're not going to let an animal suffer. There right. are animals that have to be euthanized yeah. that my vet cannot fix. Cannot help and that, save. That we feel no vet can fix that mm -hmm. we're not, and we're not going to allow an animal to suffer. Yeah. So the whole no kill is a horrible term. I don't know what the proper term should be. I'd love to come up with one that yeah. actually fits what is we're real. talking about. But. For the whole 2022, we were at over a 90% live release rate. While we have not got the award yet, we did the same thing in 2023. Wow. So we, we maintain that status. It's a fight every day to stay with that. I can imagine. So especially right now, we have so many strays coming into, dog strays that are coming into the shelter. Hmm. Um, and what's funny about it is I would say only 60% of them that are coming in are actual strays. Mm. Every day we have somebody at the back door saying this is a, a stray animal. 
And there are things that we do that I will not discuss because that tells people what to do to avoid this. But we'll come back out and we'll go, well, it's funny because we cited you for this dog three months ago, or it's funny we did this. You know, they're lying to us. And mm -hmm. the truth is if they called and said, hey, my dog's doing this, uh, we would say, well, I tell you what, why don't you come up and get a crate from us, try some crate training, let us give you some literature, let us try this. Or we give food out, you know, we, we try to send them to the food pantry, which is a wonderful group of people. You yes. know, uh, they are doing great work there. But if somebody shows up and I have a spare bag of cat food or dog food and they need it, we're going to give it to you. Yeah. We are about the animals. Yeah. So um, it's just when they show up and, and they don't tell us the truth. And, and what happens is people don't understand the ripple effect. When you lie about your dog, that dog has to stay there for five days. Yeah. That's five days of board on the taxpayers. Yeah. And when 20% of those are actually owned animals, that's ridiculous. You're costing yourself more money. Mm -hmm. And if we catch you, we, you know, we're, we're going to catch you and we're, we're going to do our job. We're yeah. going to do our job. Yeah. Now, if you call us and work with us, we'll figure out a way to help you. Yeah. So. One thing that um, I grew up learning and one thing that even my husband <clears throat> will tell you to a fault that once you bring an animal into your home and into your life, they are now your responsibility because at that point they only know you as their love. So you work to figure out how to continue to have them in your life unless there really is something that's causing an issue. Then I can say, all right, I can't handle this. I need outside help. Um, but once, once we welcome a dog or a cat into our home, they're there for their life. Well, a funny story. Um, I was part of a a raid into a drug facility meth lab mm. years ago and of course we removed the dogs but there was also a parrot there wow. well animals in the state of Kentucky are property mm. so I had to maintain chain of custody mm -hmm. I'm not a bird guy I had no clue <laughs> that the loud noises at a shelter can cause the birds heart rate to speed up and yeah. and kill it so I took the bird home and we kept it in my house. I was the officer. I did foster care for the animal. The trial was like, took two years. We ended mm -hmm. up getting possession of all the animal, but the trial, of course, every defense attorney in, in, will, will try and put it off as long as they can because they're trying to put their thumb down on top of you and say, you know, you're going to keep these dogs as long as I can make you keep them, which is horrible. I mean, when you think about it, it's yeah. just horrible. But they're doing their job. They are, they're defending yeah. their person. I, I get that. So ended up, we got control of the animals, and I remember I came home one day, and I was, you know, talking about the bird, and I was going to, you know, take the bird and find it a new home. My daughter looked at me, and she said, Dad, you know the rules. <laughs> and it was my rule. Yes. And that's once you've taken the animal into the house, it's yours. You work with the problems. You don't pass it off to somebody else. Yeah. That was 17 years ago, and Whoopi is still in my... <laughs> spare bedroom in my <laughs> office at the house yes um and she's a wonderful bird yes but you know i, I agree with you that once yep. you take them in they're your responsibility yes and it's hard sometimes it's hard especially i feel like in those puppy years people don't understand the hard work that it takes and uh my dad actually got a, a puppy recently and i told him i was like dad I'd rather have a newborn baby again than a pup because it's hard, but you got to put in the work. And yeah. once you put in the work and they reach that stage where it's just smooth sailing, you're like, all right, I've made it. But sometimes people just have trouble with that puppy stage and don't remember that it's it's hard work. Well, you you get out of it what you put into it. Yes. And, and that's what, I think that's with all life as far as I'm concerned. Yes. Um, but you're exactly right. We have people that, that come and adopt from us. And they want to bring the dog back the very next day mm. because, well, it chewed on, really? Yes. It's been in a shelter for 13 days. You, you think it's going to go home and, <laughs> and not? Be perfect. Yeah, and that's not how it works. So, you know, when we have these adoption events, like right now, we're having an adoption special for BC's birthday, which is our, our resident cat. <laughs> uh, he's If I'm the director, he's probably the, He's the president. He's, he's, <laughs> 
He's the emperor. I don't know. He, <laughs> he runs stuff. It's his place. So we're, right now we're having uh, a special for his birthday like we always have, but the truth of the matter is we're full and I need spots. Mm -hmm. The problem with any time we run a special is we usually get at least 20% of those animals back because mm -hmm. people don't think about... The two things they don't do is they don't think about like what you just said, that it is does take time and energy. Mm -hmm. And secondly, they don't research the breed. Yes. You know, you need to research what breeds are about. And one of the know. funniest ones for me is, uh, you know, a, a Dotson, you know, mm -hmm. wiener dogs, whatever you yes. want to call them. People get those and they're cute puppies of this. They're adorable. <laughs> I've had many in my life. They're wonderful. Yeah. They are also bred to go into a badger's home and take him out of his own home. <laughs> Yep. You got to think about what kind of dog you're dealing with when you get at home. You're dealing with a hard-headed animal. Yes. That is stubborn, and once you get them to where, like you said, but and all animals are different. Mm -hmm. You know, some animals may take two years. Some may take six. Yes. So if people research the breed a little mm -hmm. bit, and, and you know, people are like, well, it's a mixed breed. Well, try to figure out what it's mixed what's, with. Yeah. And what what's its that predominant? Is. Yes. You know, uh, healing animals, uh, Australian shepherds, cattle mm -hmm. dogs. They are going to heal. It's oh, yeah. inside of them. They don't have to be around horses or cattle to do that. They're going to start hurting They're going to hurt you. <laughs> or you, yeah. That's how it works. Yes. So knowing that and being able to understand who they are mm -hmm. as beings, to be able to guide them and love them and understand who they are. Well, and adopting a dog or a cat is like, it's not as important as adopting a kid. Please know that I, I'm aware of that. Oh, yeah. I do believe that in my field there are people that believe that animal life is just as important in people's life, and I'm sorry, that's not true. Mm -hmm. That is in no way true. I love animals. Mm -hmm. I love them f fully, mm -hmm. but human life is number one. Yes. But if you, if you sit back and understand everything in a whole before you ever get an animal, it's very similar to adopting a kid. It's very simple. It's, it, it's not as long. Mm -hmm. but there's a lot of work in the beginning just mm -hmm. like you know I, I have a grandson now um, me and your dad actually became uh, grandparents right around the same time which yeah. was awesome for both of us <laughs> just so you know and probably one of our favorite things in the world just from me and him talking so I changed diapers you know mm -hmm. or well I did um, we're getting past that now oh yes thank goodness yes <laughs> but I changed diapers uh, I gave baths I I dealt with all those things that you had, you know, the taking the diaper to the garbage uh, outside as opposed to in your house, oh, you know, yes. all those things. It's very similar when you look mm -hmm. at it. And so if you do want to get a dog or a cat, cats are easier, mm -hmm. but they still have their own challenges. Oh, yes, they do. Oh, yes. And oh, I want to say, too, when I got here, my problem, when I came here, my problem was cats. They were euthanizing 1,500 cats a year at the cost of $25 per cat to the taxpayer, and that's a, a modest estimate. Mm. Right now, for our adoption program, our cats are keeping us afloat. We get a cat in, it gets adopted. It's wonderful. The TNR program works. Wow. The numbers are going down, and it's, it's out there. And there were people that were dead set against me mm. when we had started that program. I'm and sure they were. It's funny. One of the most outspoken people that was against me has now teamed up with another group that is doing trap neuter release. Yeah. So it's 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 amazing. So they've they've completely changed their position. You yeah, have encouraged change. Yeah. Well. You have. Just so you know, none of these ideas are mine. Um, I get educated. I go to different things. I I, I have to maintain a certain level of education. Mm -hmm because me and my board on Kentucky Animal Care and Control Association, we're responsible for training all the officers of the state of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not on the cutting edge, I can't bring anything new to them. But you have fostered that change and you mm -hmm. have taken what you have learned that you know works and you've implemented it and you've encouraged it and other people have seen that it works. Yes. So I would say that you have fostered that change well, thank you. and that you have shown encouragement to people not only on your staff but I'm sure to your volunteers and other people in the community. Which by the way I wanted to bring that up. Yes. Our volunteer program is doing excellent things. We the other day I walked in and we had 11 people being trained as volunteers. Um, they are doing some phenomenal work with those animals and that's helping it's just 
the biggest reason for the success of, of our shelter is this community. Mm -hmm. Yes, my workers are great. Yes, I, I have good ideas. Yes, the government is behind me. The bottom line is if, if the community is not on board, you're going to drown. Yes. This community. It's the community I was meant to be in. Um, Who welcomed you with open arms. Yes. And I have no interest. You know, I've, since I've been here, we've had enough success that I've had other agencies come talk to me about employment. I can't imagine leaving this community, let alone the job and my team and everything else, yeah. but this community is, it's just the best community I've ever been involved in. It's a driving force yes. and they care. So if somebody wants to become a volunteer, how can they do that? I'd start out by either sending an, <clears throat> an email to the shelter or giving us a call, 270-769-3428, okay. uh, um, or send us an email or connect with us on Facebook. However. We, uh, we only have 13 staff, so we're not fantastic about returning Facebook. It's hard. Well, most shelters have a person that's employed dedicated Just to that, that. spot. Mm -hmm. We don't. That person handles that, the phones, foster care, volunteers, all these different things. Yeah. And that's another thing I will say about this community. Hardin County does twice as much with half as much. Yes. And that is fact. So speaking of different events coming up, you all have an event coming up. Tell yes. us about it. We have a rabies clinic coming up Saturday, April 13th. It's going to be 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. We're going to host it at 2855 Centennial Avenue in Radcliffe. It's in front of the APR building. Okay. Um, it's cash or check only. We don't have the way Absolutely. of doing credit card. But if you need your rabies shots, your vaccines, come out and see us. That sounds amazing. Thank you so much for how much you care for this community, not just the animals who need the love, but the people here too, and encouraging them to take care of each other and to take care of the beings that they've brought into their homes or coming to bring them into their homes from you all. Well, thank you. We appreciate you, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us today for Issues and Insights. We'll see you next time.